Brent, I'd like you to meet Miss Jones of EXG Pharmaceuticals Australasian Division. Brent Smythe. Hello, Mr Smythe. Oh, sure name, Miss Jones. Great pleasure on you, Poof Barry. Great pleasure to meet you, darling. You're doing something for my chemistry already, doll, if you know what I mean. <laughs> a new contraceptive male pill onto the market about six months ago. Doll, we are way, way, way ahead of you because I personally have had Barry testing that pill for the last six weeks. <laughs> Absolutely, I've been testing my rocks off and I must say... This... <laughs> yeah. well, we've been having uh, a bit of trouble with side effects. Well, look, that, 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 that is perfectly understandable, darling, because you get a new product occasionally, you know, things are going to go wrong, things go wrong, and, you know, you need to flatten out the curves. Absolutely, yeah. And what, what side effects are, are we uh, talking here, you know, exactly? See, I think what the public needs in a situation such as this is reassurance that it's not going to damage the corporate image, that there's going to be no problem. So you don't think we should admit liability? Never, ever, ever admit liability. I think that's just a no-no. And I, I mean no-no in the no-no sense of the word. They want to be reassured that there's going to be, uh, that everything's going to be OK. There's going to be no problems. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what exactly are these, uh, you know, s side effects, exactly? <laughs> well, mostly they're affecting people's genital area. <laughs> now, naturally, we're concerned about the effect on our corporate image yep. and we're willing to spend a lot of money to preserve it. Well, I think reputation's fairly important because, uh, you know, reputation is something, quite frankly, that money can't buy. Well, you can buy it, of course, you know, you can buy, you know, a million dollars, a bit of advertising, a bit of TV, media, billboards, a whole bit, you can buy it in that sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, if we can just uh, get back to the uh, side effects for a moment, please, uh, more specifically, uh, how... Yeah. It gets bigger. So, Mrs. Smythe, our whole corporate image has been based around the slogan. What we're getting at? Caring for people. Caring for people. That is one great slogan, Barry. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, is is that all? What? Oh, I'm sorry, is, is that all? I mean, it just gets bigger. That doesn't seem too bad, actually. Well, you know, that, that's not so much of an image problem, really, quite frankly, Doc. No, it doesn't just get bigger. It, uh, after a while, it gets smaller. Oh, and uh, then it turns green. Mm -hmm. and, it, and in extreme cases, and this hardly ever happens, statistically Never. not worth mentioning, right. but uh, they, kind of, they sort of go a, a mauvey colour and, and <laughs> drop off. <laughs> what, what, what drops off? Well, they do. The whole thing. But hardly, no, no. hardly yeah. ever happens. This has only happened to two guys so Two's far. Nothing. Two nothing. It hasn't been proven legally that our product's got anything to do with it. Anyway, as I was saying, the image... Is there anything that you can to... take to sort of stop these... Uh, so, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> so, side effects? Actually, that was something I wanted to talk to you guys about. When the antidote comes out, that's provided the boys in the lab can crack it. That sounds like a... <laughs> that sounds like a pretty damn big if to me. Well, if the antidote does come out, it's going to be a very big seller and we expect to make a lot of money out of that. And we'll be asking you guys to handle that campa campaign as well. Well, that sounds pretty damn exciting because, quite frankly, Barry's going to be looking for something to handle at that stage. <laughs> no can do. No can do. No can do. No, 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 no can do. Just get that account, mate. No can do. Thank you, Barry. What's next, son? Uh, Charlie wants to uh, run the uh, women's rights campaign past the spring. Yeah, who's Charlie? Charlie, new creative hotshot down in creative. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that'll be Charlie now. Come. Yeah. Charlie Brent. Oh, shall I, Charlie? I mean, uh, Barry mentioned you were coming up, but he didn't say you're a woman and a damned attractive one of that. On your foot, Barry. Thank you. Please. Now, I'd like to run this women's anti-sexual harassment campaign. <laughs> Absolutely. Go for your life, doll. Uh, look, uh, Charlie, before we get started, there's something I'd like to clear up with you. Uh, how are you going to delineate between uh, sexual harassment on the one hand and uh, secretaries who just can't get enough of it? <laughs> <coughs> uh, Charlie, what I'd like to do is sort of uh, workshop this whole sexual harassment campaign up on more of a... One to one basis, just you and me uh, rubbing our heads together. But Brent, uh, Shut up, Barry. Barry, there's a small errand I'd like you to do. Just... Now. 
Well, it's, uh, it's pretty bright in here, and I find that when you're brainstorming, you know, the bright lights and everything, it doesn't really be conducive to getting the old uh, juices flowing. <laughs> Creatively speaking, if you know where I'm coming from. The campaign. Yeah, the campaign. Go for it, Dolly. Right, well, our research stats show that 80% of women are likely to experience some form of sexual harassment uh, at some stage in their career. 80%? 80 per 80 I mean, that's, 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 that's a figure, ain't he? <laughs> what is that smell? Oh, that perfume, darling. I'm not wearing any perfume. Must be my aftershave, I tell you. This is turning me on something shocking. <laughs> Have a smell of that, doll. Woo-wee. I think, Mr. Smythe... Brent, Brent, please, Brent, darling. Mr. Smythe, if we can uh, make women employees perhaps more aware of their rights. Uh... I know where you're coming from, darling. Fulfilling women, and believe you me, I'm onto fulfilling women in every possible way. If you know where I'm coming from. Yes, and perhaps if we can make employers abuse their power less, we might. Flash, darling, I have just had the most incredible flash. I want you to picture this. There's a very attractive young female employee, and she's come to see her very attractive, talented. And relatively well-off male employer and he puts to her the proposition they go down to his place for the weekend bit of a spa toss a few ideas around and then uh, well a couple of torrid nights of sexual harassment what do you say to that doll this woman would have several causes of action i bet she would if sexual penetration were to occur and believe you me it would <laughs> Without the employee's consent, the employer could face a charge of rape and a sentence of 25 years in jail or compulsory chemical castration. <laughs> chemical castration, you say? Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a fraction dark in here, wouldn't you say? Uh, look, let me just get those lights up. Um, I find that when you're talking about these Brent, sorts uh, of... One bottle of Moe oh. and only two glasses <laughs> required. Barry, <laughs> Barry get the hell out of here, Barry. for the lovely young mademoiselle. Uh, Barry, could you just... Uh... I think I might have that. Listen, I've just got to... We're doing some uh, auditions upstairs, and I'll just whip up and see how the cast ca casting's going. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm out of here. Uh, actually, a uh, little uh, light in here is nothing. I might turn this down. Right, mood, get the old juices flowing, creatively speaking. <laughs> back to the midday show. I'm Richard Carlton, sitting in while Liz Hayes is sitting in for Yana, who was sitting on Ray, in, in, in for Ray. <laughs> he was sitting in for Mike Willis. Incidentally, Mike, hope you're feeling better. <laughs> Our next guest is another man who's applied to become an Ansett pilot. Would you please make welcome Douglas Plater? <laughs> Douglas, uh... <laughs> uh, Douglas, your background is an aviator. Yes. <laughs> Over the years, I've flown many things. Sopwiths, Tiger Moths, Spitfires, <laughs> Hurricanes, Mr. Schmidt's Heinkels, Space Shuttle. <laughs> Well, that's, that, that's extraordinary. No, not really. Most of our members have had similar experience. Uh, members? Yes. Uh, members of what? Uh, the Australian Flying Model Aeroplane Association, <laughs> North Greensboro Division. I'm the treasurer this year. I've got the token. Here you so are. So you fly model aeroplanes? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> Have you ever flown a real aeroplane? Oh, there's not the time, is there? What with uh, buying the balsa wood and sticking it all together and putting the little stickers on. You've got to be careful to get the clip in, you yes, see. Yes. You clip uh, around. Uh, now, what? And you are going to fly for Anset. Well, I know it won't be easy. <laughs> uh, but as long as the strings don't get caught up and the rubber band doesn't break, <laughs> then I think people shall have nothing to worry about. We'll be back with more of the Midday Show in just a moment. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'll be frank with you.
with you. Please. Now, I've been to quite a few advertising agencies over this little problem and they've all turned their noses up at it <laughs> over ethical reasons. Well, you don't have to worry about that here. Ethical, smethical. We, our job is to sell, eh, Barry? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 That is, that is a really great colour. Uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. With the right packaging, marketing, we could, we could move heaps of this stuff. Um, Absolutely. It could be a very hot item. Hot item, that one. Very, very hot item. What is it? We don't know. <laughs> not a problem. Not a problem. I think you've come to us at this. Very, we can be very creative at this particular. Max creative freedom as a result of that. You know, I wish, Barry, a lot of our clients Absolutely. Come to us at the early I, I stage. I wish they'd come to us be, before they've got really got any concept of what, what they're what, trying to what do. What the product is. I think it's very important. Now, this stuff... This stuff is a byproduct of a new solvent we've developed which scales our toxic waste from petrol tankers during a refit. Yeah. We've got a heap of the stuff on our hands, we don't know what to do with it. We've had the EPA on our backs 24 hours a day. What's actually in it? Well, it's 60% uh, sugar, 35% fat and 5% non-specific uh, atomic toxic waste. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty's Confectionery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, that is an expanding area, buddy. And you, all you've got to do is whack a couple of swap cards in it and you're laughing. Absolutely. No, it's an absolute Monty. Barry, good name for it, Monty. Look, can you put a, can you put a stick in it? Well, it eats through uh, plastic and wood. <laughs> Monty, the only ice cream on a metal stick. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I like it. It's ringing all the right bells. It's pressing all the right buzz buttons with me, Barry. Eh? I tell you, I've got a very, very, very good feeling about this. Very one. good, very positive. It's a winner. This man is an advertising genius. Genius. <laughs> Barry, what does it taste like? <laughs> oh, I'm on a bit of a diet, Brent. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Excuse me for a moment, will you, gentlemen? <laughs> Barry appears to like it, so uh, I think we've got a winner here. Good evening and welcome back to Parapsychology Today. One of the exciting new developments in New Age consciousness is the extraordinary phenomenon known as channeling. This is where a special person is able to act as a medium or channel to contact a higher consciousness from the other world. Tonight we're very privileged to have one of the world's greatest channelers with us. Please welcome straight from the Surface Paradise Cosmic Research Institute in Funorama Park, the great <laughs> Tofu. <laughs> Cornella, you stupid little man. What a how many... <laughs> Peace be on yous. God bless yous. Peace be on yous. Peace be on yous. Peace. God bless yous. Now, am I right in saying that you yourself are not the great Tofu? No, you are not speaking to Tofu now, no. You are speaking to Desme Jarvis. That is my earthly given name. So, who is the tofu? Well, Tree Tofu, as we call him, was a very wise man who lived in Atlantis for thousand years ago and who speaks through me. So, he was a shaman, a high priest from Atlantis? No, he was a plumber there <laughs> just before it sank. And how did you meet him? Oh, it was a sad story. I was standing in line at the TAB and, uh, you know, I'd had a bit of misfortune. I'd invested very unwisely in a business venture, Charlemagne's Pride and the Sixth at Randwick, and uh, all of a sudden he appeared behind me and he said that, you know, he could help me recover some of my debt. He had a sort of a sca scheme going. And uh, so far, you know, he's been dead right. How did he make this offer to you? He offered to enter me. To, <laughs> to enter you? That's right, to inhabit my void. 
And I believe that he is going to inhabit your void right here and now. That is correct, yes. I should point out that at the point that Tofu <laughs> enters my physical self, Desme Jarvis leaves. I will have no recollection whatsoever of what has taken place here. No memory at all. I see. Now, what I'm going to do now is get some of the, all of the audience members to link hands with the people in front of them, concentrate their energies, and we'll be able to help the tofu to channel more successfully. So if you could please now link hands with the people directly in front of you. <laughs> Right, you are. All right, everyone. <laughs> oh, great tree tofu, plumber of the universe, hear me, hear me. That's like, sorry, wrong channel. <laughs> I am tofu. <laughs> Listen to what I say. Now, I know there are some members of the audience who are from the Australian Skeptic Society. Would you like to ask your questions now? Yes. Yeah, you say you're a plumber. Well, how do you get the reverse valve off a 90-litre ream hot water service? I'm sorry, I do not give free quotes. <laughs> I don't believe it. She really is a plumber. <laughs> to introduce you to possibly our newest client, Dr. Harara. <laughs> Dr. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, what can we do you for, Doc? Yeah, this is the product. It's a new children's doll called Torture Victim. <laughs> you put the blood in here, and then when you put the knife in, it comes out not only through the wound, you see, but through the mouth as well. That's uh, terrific, Barry. Absolutely, yeah. Now, the limbs, of course, are fully detachable. Oh. And it comes with the accessories, including a rack. <laughs> you turn the wheel, and you can actually hear the bones crack. <laughs> And also, we have the Iron Maiden, here with the spikes uh, on the inside. And something, this has never happened before in a children's toy, you can actually remove the entrails. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, doc, doctor, uh, doc, uh, I'm going to say something that I don't think I've ever said before, but we, we may have a slight ethical problem with this. I was thinking of spending uh, around two million dollars on the campaign. What ethical problem do you envisage, Mr. Smart? <laughs> well, well, the only ethical problem we would really have here, Barry, I think, is how we could do justice to this wonderful toy. <laughs> I, uh, I see what you mean. It's the parents. Sometimes they get a little squeamish. Uh. Wow. Well, heaven knows why. I mean, I'm a, I'm a parent. I've got kids myself, Barry. Absolutely. Uh, four <laughs> definites and six pending. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 look, I've got, and Barry would have no problem with this. You've got a family yourself, Barry. Certainly, yeah, I see the kiddies for 15 minutes every third Sunday without fail. And if I can't make it, I get the girlfriend to ring up the ex-wife and tell her it's a no-show. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, dear gentlemen, 
Would you do to me the honor of accepting this prototype as a gift? Oh, oh really, I, I couldn't. <laughs> Barry no, would be delighted to accept this uh, on behalf uh, of the but, agency. But Brad, my kids have got lots of Barry, toys. Barry, pick up the toy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, the bloody thing!